Hey, pals, just want to say thanks to our listeners for supporting independent podcasters like your Go With The Heat hosts. You make this show possible every week by hanging out with us, and we love you for it. If you'd like to show some additional support, head on over to patreon.com slash go with the heat to find out more. Hello, and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 50. Every week, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna add that little inflection. Like, eh, we only got six more after this. Six more, and the show is over. As I shed a tear. <laughs> this episode is titled Over the Line. It originally premiered on April 28th, 1989. Now, hold on. That's a big gap from the last time an episode aired on Miami Vice. The last episode was March 17th, 1989. And apparently, it was delayed for some series called The Dream Street, which I've never heard of before. So, Melissa. Can you help us out here? What is this Dream Street show that held up the next episode of Miami Vice? It was, as far as I remember, it was, this is going to sound really funny. It was like a drama about 20, 20 something people, and they were they lived in Hobo, Hoboken, New Jersey. You know way too much about that because that's actually what I read about it. <laughs> you so that out of memory. <laughs> I, I only remember it was it was not it was not good. I only saw like one episode. So, so it was like some kind of party of five on the Jersey Shore. I only remember it was it was, that it was like distinctively. I remember it was in New Jersey, and it was like a drama about people like white people in New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No wonder no one wanted to watch it. <laughs> I remember it not being good. There's not enough tanning beds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when I looked it up, I didn't find any information about the show except for like the little Wikipedia entry. I did, however, find a 1999 boy band called Dream Street performing on the Maury show. I remember them. They were young, <laughs> right? Are they, or weren't they like really young? Yes. And I have a question. Do you think they found out who their real dad was? Because they were on Maury. So <laughs> Either that Maury. or they took a lie detector. <laughs> Which one of them was a liar? <laughs> the writer for this episode is Robert Ward. She sound familiar. He's got eight writing credits and is also the show's co-producer. And is also written by Scott Shepard, who also wrote Redemption in Blood, Bad Timing, Hard Knocks, and will write Freefall. Hmm. 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 The director is Russ Mayberry, who will direct Freefall. Hmm. hmm. He's also probably the most accomplished TV director Vice has ever had. He is a titan behind the camera. He's got an unreal list of directing credits for TV. All right, John, as you know, I do a companion show called This Week in Vice. And for this week's episode, there's actually four number ones that happened in between the last episode. And one of them is from Mike and the Mechanics. And so I figured... This is just a slam dunk for Mike and the Mechanics to appear in this week's music. What do you got for us this week? Not Mike and the Mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we get one band and one band only, The Fix, with their song, I'm Life. Now, this isn't the first time that we have heard the music of The Fix in the show. Their music also appeared in the episode, The Tale of the Goat. Could possibly be before I started my music section. So we're going to really touch on them. We're going to go, we're just going to go do a full dive on them. The Fix is a British rock and new wave band formed in London in 1979. Their biggest hits are songs, One Thing Leads to Another, which is probably the song you got, we, we would all know. Other hits, Saved by Zero, Here We Are Ourselves, and Secret Separation, all of which made the U.S. top 20, as well as uh, some MTV video hits with their songs Red Skies and uh, Standard Fall. But they were pretty pretty popular. They were hitting the charts. They were uh, getting regular rotation on MTV at the time. They were originally formed by college friends Cy Kernan on vocals and drummer Adam Woods. They were originally called, the band was originally called The Portraits. They would place an ad and they would add keyboardist Rupert Greenell, guitarist Tony McGrail, and bassist Russell McKenzie, but McKenzie would almost would be replaced almost immediately by Charlie Barrett. They would only release two singles before they he would be replaced, and then guitarist Tony McGrail would be replaced 
by guitarist James West Aura, formerly of the Philip Rambos band. And at that point is when they would change their name to The Fix. And pretty quickly changed their name from The Fix with one X to The Fix with two X's. Because the record label thought that one X would associate them with drugs, but two X's... <laughs> Two X's, <laughs> not associate them with drugs. The difference maker. So their MCA RCA period was from 82 to 91. They saw a ton of success in the United States and Canada, but they also went through bassists like Spinal Tap went through drummers. <laughs> Their song Deeper and Deeper would show up on the soundtrack for the 84 film Streets of Fire. Their 84 album Reach the Beach would be their most commercial success, commercially successful album. Curran and West Orem would do stuff like play tracks for Tina Turner's al- 84 album Private Dancer. For big time, the 80s. Their 85 song A Letter to Both Sides would be made specifically for the film Fletch. That's big, guys. Fletch was a big film in the 80s. (laughs) Number one during this time period was also the sequel, Fletch Lives. One of the more unnecessary sequels of the 80s. That that was after Fletch Lives that people were like, okay, we've kind of had enough of uh, Chevy Chase. (laughs) They would do uh, release four more albums throughout the 80s into the 90s with a ton of success. By 92, they were pretty established. They would actually move. This would be their... Post major label era, they released with a bunch of different other smaller record labels. And as we know, they would instantly replace their bassists. In 94, bassist Dan K. Brown would leave the band and they just, they would replace them. Instead, they would just use session musicians. And then Chris Date, who was in the band, I believe, as the guitarist, would also play bass on most recordings. And during some of the live shows from 95 to the early 2000s. Yeah, they were like, screw it. We're we're done (laughs) auditioning bassists. We're we're just going to hire a guy for every city. (laughs) During this era in the early 2000s that they would cover Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking for the cover album When Pigs Fly, which uh, actually that's a pretty big, that was a pretty big album. And then in 2003, they would bring in Gary Tibbs, formerly of bands The Roxy Music, The Vibrators, and Adam of the <laughs> Ant, Adam and the Ants. <laughs> and Tibbs would play bass for their ninth studio album, Want That Life. Then in 2008, Dan K. Brown would return, which would bring together one of the original lineups, or basically back to their 90- pre-90s, one of their pre-90s lineups, as a celebration for their 25th year as a band. They would release a double anthology, and in 2012, release their 10th studio album with the classic lineup in place, with their classic lineup in place, the album known as Beautiful Friction. So, and I guess they still regularly tour all all the way around, uh, all around the world. So, like, the fix is still, still out there doing it, man. Still making the dream happen. I hear they're big in Australia. (laughs) And uh, there's your music. Everybody go out and look up the vibrators. (laughs) I don't know. I'm starting to hear all these bands starting to feel like I have a shot at making bass. (laughs) <laughs> okay well let's go give our final thoughts on this episode uh i'm interested to see where everyone stands because i've kind of you know i've kind of planted my flag as i do throughout the breakdown i'm interested to see where everyone else is at let's go give our final thoughts on this one and that's gonna do it for <laughs> us this week on go with the heat we would love to hear from you email us go with the heat at gmail.com let us know where you stand on this episode we definitely want to hear it because so like we we're saying there's so much that leads into free fall with this episode we want to hear your thoughts on this episode not necessarily what's going to happen in free fall but what you think the effects are of this episode and anything that ties into it because as i know izzy will come back in free fall it is no mistake that Izzy makes a small appearance in this episode. Everything just fits perfectly together. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, all the ways to support us. Support step number one go to that Patreon, sign up, pledge $1. Get that one, pay us that $1 on February 1st. We will send you some stickers. I would be happy to send them out before the show comes to an end, knowing that there are people out there that love to go with the heat 
have some of our stickers, threw them on some things, and just extend the life of the show. I could make us so happy if you were to do that. So support step number two, go to your podcast, your platform of choice, leave us a review. Give us five stars, four penguins, five triangles, whatever the hell their rating system is. <laughs> write a review, but don't write a review about the podcast. No one ever reads those things except for me, apparently. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> write in there what would happen if Dr. Dinky actually survived and continued his ice cream ways. <laughs> what would Dr. Dinky be doing right now? <laughs> Support step number three, email us, goldthead at gmail.com. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.